Nothing gets better until you make up your mind. Don't ever be too spiritual to forget to be responsible. Nothing gets better until you make up your mind. And don't be too spiritual to forget to be responsible. Love in action. You cannot declare yourself to be a child of God and not exhibit love. Once you become a born again child of God, you possess the spirit of love. Once the spirit of God comes to reside in you, love must be exhibited. It, it, will, be, it will be impossible to say that I am a child of God, but I do not love. Marriages and relationships do not happen just because you wish. So you cannot just look at two couples who walk around holding their hands together and say that in the name of Jesus, I buy into this anointing. I buy into this grace. It does not happen like that. So you cannot wish that your marriage or your relationship become good when you have not made up your mind that I'm going to let it become like that. In fact, I want to say this. You can disagree. Prayer does not make your marriage go well. But it is good to pray. Prayer does not make... Let me say it like this. Prayer automatically does not make marriage become what you want it to be. No, 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 no. And that is why, man of God, I have seen anointed prayerful Christians who cannot, they cannot handle the affairs of marriage. They can't. They don't even know what they are doing anymore. And some of them actually want to quit because they feel like they are born by sir. We are not seeing anything. And I can say this to you. Regardless of how many hours you can pray, if you refuse to be responsible, you must respond to the things you encounter in your life. And so understand that no matter the love you want to show to your partner, it will not enter inside like broom. And then suddenly your marriage will become sweet. Maybe I told you, me, if you pray six hours and you are not responsible, you've not made up your mind that this is how I want my marriage to be, it will not be. No matter how many days you fast, if you don't make up your mind that this is how I want my relationship to be, sister, your son come crying here, the bodies or your soul, it will be. Some of as Christians, we have problems. So once we marry, we think that we have, we have a better chance of enjoying marriage than those who are unbelievers. Once we marry, or once we enter into a relationship, we think that, yeah, dear, because we are born again Christians, our own should be better. I can tell you, and I can tell you and tell you, that somebody might, might not be a Christian who can enjoy marriage better than a Christian. Religion, religion does not make your marriage different from another person. Religion. Isn't it wonderful that some pastors cannot even handle their marriages? And this man of God can actually cast a demon out. Deliverance ministers. And then sometimes you wonder why this anointed man of God couldn't handle problems in his marriage. Go like, ah, the way he's anointed yet. Please, anointing does not cure challenges in marriage. And I repeat, anointing does not cure and does not exempt you from the challenges of marriage. Anointing does not, not at all. So the fact that you are anointed does not mean that you will not encounter challenges in marriage. You will and you must. The growth of marriage depends on the challenges and the solutions you provide to the problems of your marriage. The growth. And so, when you marry somebody and the two of you, you don't face any challenges. Don't think that your partner loves you so much. It is a trap. Very soon, the two of you divorce. Mm. Yeah. And so, when you marry and you think, oh, hey, my husband is sweet. Oh my God. My wife, eh, she, my wife has never brought any problem to me. Like, since we got married, every day peace, every day peace. Get ready for pieces. It should not be one way or the other. 
Somebody must bring an issue on board that will stir up conflicts. That will stir up disagreements. Am I blessing somebody? That will stir up misunderstanding. And all these things must happen. Why? Because love and marriage is a journey. It's too wonderful for all. It's sweet. When you marry new, eh, that thing is sweet. Like you wish, wish, <laughs> you wish, like you guys will never disagree on anything. Like anything the man you say, she should say yes. Yes. They go like, wow, I have the best wife. Ladies and gentlemen, if your wife is best and does not disagree with you, she's about to kill you. If you have a wife who does not disagree with you on some matters, and she goes like, yes, me, I, me, everything you are doing is perfect. You are about to die. <laughs> and so, today I want to talk about how to make your relationship and your marriage work. How to make it work. By God's grace, I've been married for some time. For some time. I can tell you there are things you can do to let it work. Yet, it does not excuse you from the challenges ahead of you. And these are things I'm going to talk about. Look 14, 20. Suppose one of you want to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? Question mark. Let's take it again. Suppose one of you want to do what? Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough, enough, oh, enough. Whether I have money or not, does it concern you? No, church. Does it concern you? Oh, no. Let's be real. Me, I bought my land. I want to build. It doesn't concern you. Whether I have enough to build or not, it doesn't concern you. Why should somebody be concerned about it? Now, look at Jesus' words. Jesus said, suppose one of you want to build a tower. Will he not first? In other words, you cannot build without first of all counting the cost. In other words, Jesus wants to say that when you want to build, the building is not a problem. But are you sure once you have started, you can finish? In other words, there is a price to pay. Suppose one of you want to build a tower. Will he not first? So in other words, even before you enter into this, Sit to ask yourself, can I handle this man? Can I handle this woman? Am I sure the next 40 years we can go? Looking at his character, attitude, face, the way they talk, the way they are short and tall. Am I sure? Count the cost. The cost. The cost has to do with the attitude and the character of the person. Will you know first of all, sit, sit down and estimate, estimate the next five, ten years, can we still be married? The reason why some of you, you are still holding on to the marriage and the relationship is because the way you started it, did, 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 did. if the thing collapsed, they'll mock at you. So, anyway, anyhow, you need to hold on. And that's why somebody can go like, I am here because of the children. If not the children, like me, I have divorced the wrong time. You are, if you live today, your enemies who saw you start and did not finish because you didn't count the cost, they'll mock at you. They will say that I want them pray. And then when you got the guy to you, you didn't keep quiet. You went to tell your friends that I have met some guy. The way he fears God, he's dark in color. The way he's tall, the guy is good. Say, hey! then your guy said he's the gentleman. He fears God. This guy who fears God is now trying to separate from you. For he, <laughs> for if he lays the foundation and he's not able to finish it, everyone who says it will do what? Number one, to be able to start a good, successful relationship, count the cost. Count the cost. You want to marry the man is a liar. Count the cost. He has already started lying in a relationship. Count the cost. The next twenty years. You are dealing with Mr. Liar if he doesn't change. It is either the guy stops it or will increase in grace. Anything 
Anything, whoever you are with in a relationship does not change from, can never change about. If you are dealing with a guy who is a womanizer, I'm sorry, they will surely increase in grace. At the point, you go like, I saw it, but I thought they would change. So, to be able to start a relationship or to be able to marry well, count the look at them and say, count the cost. I am not saying count the cost by looking for uh, the event center. Event center is not counting the cost. That one, you are just spending money. And even that one, somewhere, somehow, you count the cost. To see if your money is enough to rent that event center. Is it not true? The ring you want to wear, you count the cost. The suit, count the cost. The attire, count the cost. How many girls, page girls or flower girls, count the cost. The food, we are 200 people coming to eat, count the cost. That one, you can count the cost and budget. And yet, you will not count the cost about the person you are about to marry the rest of your life. Please don't joke. If I decide to marry now, 47 years of my life, I have been alone. Count the cost. I eat what I want to eat. I sleep as, I sleep as when I want to sleep. The kind of friends I have, I have them before you came. And probably some of the friends are school friends. I must be Jesus. Me I have them already. You long time. Me, I have a way I communicate. I can actually insult you, Holy Spirit. Forgive me. And viewers, please. I have a way I communicate. I can go like Aboa. That is the way I speak. And then you come, you want to marry me. 47 years. You want to come and marry me. The first one year of courtship. You want me to change. Count the cost. You cannot change me after 47 years of my life. I am used to my way of life. You want to marry me and within five years, I should change and adjust to your way of expectation. Please count the cost because I'm not changing now. Forget about how spiritual I am. I cannot just change to adjust to your level of expectation. No, it doesn't happen like that. So now you have to count the cost to ask yourself, can I handle this one? Nebufu, ever saying, Nebufu, two days, no, I block you. Even in marriage, the buffoa, two days. No, no, Kasai. You are in the same house, but you guys, you are not talking. Count the cost. That hey, two, two days, you are with your husband in the same room. Two days, no sex. One week, no sex. You guys go like, mm. <laughs> silence treatment. <laughs> What's the meaning? I said, have I spoken to you? Nonsense. I was going to nonsense. I was, I, are you the one insulting me? I said, did you hear your name? <laughs> you want to marry a pastor who is already addicted to his church. Count the cost. Count the cost. Count the cost. You want to marry a man. You already married to a man. Akwani nisu ba the koko nye odibu kasa. Nebufu ba enye. Count the cost. That if we marry and this thing happens, can I contain this person? So it is not about butterflying. It's not about I love you, baby. Baby. Mwah. Oh, babe. You are too much. Anytime I see you, water pass inside me. Then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Count the cost to see. If what you have started, you can finish it. If you count the cost and you can't finish it, I came to announce to you that walk away. Starting a relationship is not a problem. But finishing it is a problem. You can desire for a ring. Yes, you can get a ring. But keeping a ring comes with challenges. You can desire for a ring. You can get a ring. You can get it. But how to keep the ring is the issue. Everybody can wear a ring and start a relationship, but few can finish it. The cost of your wedding ring does not matter. The cost of your wedding ring does not matter. Whether gold or silver, or it was made out of wood, it doesn't matter. The price of your wedding gown, it doesn't matter. What matters the most is how to keep the ring. 
How do you handle issues in your relationship and marriage? Will determine how the ring can be kept. Leave me alone. Foolish. Look, don't let me lose my temper. Look, you don't know me. Go and ask my mother. Don't let my thing come. Because when it comes, you don't like me. And you don't like what you see. Eh. Look at the base, they count the cost. <laughs> your beauty can be for greetings. But your character can be for introduction. You want to marry? You want to make it work? Don't worry the Holy Spirit. Pray! But until you become responsible, until you accept the fact that I am the one who decides how my marriage will be, leave the spirit of the Lord alone. After the prayer, you need to make a decision. Now, yeah, everybody watch me. For example, if I have disagreement with my wife, and then I go and pray one hour, remember, I'm still no one. So I have, listen, listen. We just disagreed on a matter. We just have some arguments. Exchange of words, whatever. And we are not nice. And then out of anger, I go like, leave me alone. Then I'm gone. After seven hours prayer, seven hours prayer has affected me. It has touched my heart. No, I'm forgiving you. No. I need to be responsible that after seven hours prayer, I still need to learn how to do this. Baby. I'm so sorry, please. Forgive me. Oh, don't cry. Oh, no, no, no. I don't feel comfortable. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Are you sure you are forgiving me? Oh, no. Stop that, baby. Oh, baby. After seven, thank you. Seven hours prayer. Be, look at them and say, be responsible. In Africa, men with their ego and pride will never say, I'm sorry. Especially when they are holding a position. General manager, a reverend minister, a pastor, a prophet of God. A prophet of God. <laughs> what your concept? Before you became a prophet, didn't you know that one day you will become somebody's husband? When you come to church, you are the prophet. But when you are home, you are my husband. I will not disrespect you. You will not disrespect me. But be responsible. Don't cover your shame in the name of Jesus. So I believe in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But also I believe that one has to be responsible. Be responsible. Don't hide behind the Bible and in the name of Jesus. I'm sorry, it'll be fully. Be responsible. When you make a mistake, don't go and buy gifts. Say sorry. Be responsible. Don't go and buy a watch and watch it. A flower, card. Don't go and, buy, and go like, babe, I know we are not nice, but you, I bought you a gift. What is that? When you make a silly mistake, who I beg you, if you cannot nail, just go like, babe, I'm sorry. I don't suffer the true kakra. It's baby. Just baby, it's okay. Kokrono. Baby, it's okay. Baby, I'm sorry. Jump, jump. Leave me alone. It's baby, it's okay. So no, leave me, leave me. You have really hurt my heart. <laughs> it's baby, baby. I know I've really offended you. Baby, forgive me. I mean, you are the only person I will offend. Baby, let go. Look at the baby say, be responsible. Oh, look at the baby say, count the cost. No, say it well. Look at the baby say, count the cost. Say, babe, forgive me. Be like, okay. Or, uh, then after she or he has forgiven, then the gift can be presented. So they accept the gift wholeheartedly with peace of mind. So if you want to enjoy your marriage, number one, count the cost. Can I handle this person's attitude? Some of them, they have mood swing problem. They are in their menses. Mood swing. The pain she is enduring alone makes her look some way. Sometimes you want to talk to her and she goes like, uh-huh, I said, Then you go like, 
Uh, is that the way you talk to a man? You want to slap me? Slap me and see where you sleep. Slap, slap. Moose swing. Count the cost. Count the cost. Weigh them. Who oh, yes, you sending moose swing bar? Only the cast 30 minutes on Jesus. We will have a swing problem, but we will cheeky answer problem. <laughs> or you're born again, but the awareness are not born again. What in the casa? What's that say? Hey, we okay? Now can you come here then? Say, hey, now the man go. Look at the man say count the cost. Now, see, all these things I'm saying, it doesn't matter how spiritual you are, you will encounter it. These are the realities on the ground. So, if you really want to enjoy marriage, please count the cost. Count it. Count the cost. Count. Count the cost. She gives you money. Count back to tell you that the money belongs to a friend or the grandmother or the mother. So, you need to pay back. Yet, the money is for her. Count the cost. <laughs> Somebody count the cost. Number two, if you really want to enjoy and have a successful relationship for marriage, please do away technology when both are together. Do away technology. Yeah, do away. Do away. Spend time. No, spend time. Spend quality time together with that technology. In my dispensation, it's sad that the wife and the husband will be sitting or seated and then one will be on TikTok, the other will be on Facebook. And yet they are communicating. See, I send back within five minutes, they should finish talking about 20 hours. They are still talking. So I have to say, hey, hey. We are okay. Let's hold on, hold on back. We are there. But when we are TikTok, now we are saying, hey, what are you doing? I say, hey, baby, come on, come on, baby. I go with Jimmy, we are here. Before you say Jack, you are done. You want the person to give you attention. All of a sudden, hold on, Beba. Beba. We really had to be on Facebook about it. So by the time you realize the two of you, you are not building a solid communication between the two of you. You want to have a successful marriage, and all the two of you can do is to be on, you know, on social media. I'm sorry. No, I do. So, the two of you, you are together and you are not having any better communication. TikTok, WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, X. And sometimes you wake up around 11 and you are on social media. And your partner too is sleeping there like that. Looking at the ceiling like that. They're each other. So, oh, okay. I say, hi. So, okay. I say, I'm here. I say, I'm here. TikTok, I'm here. And one hour, the two of you, you are not communicating, but you are silently sitting. And then everybody is doing his own thing. What is this? No phones and look at the bond. Now in my generation, we don't eat together. We eat apart. I bet in separate apart. No, so no, watch me, watch me. So where is the bond? Oh, you need to receive your can I close the zip for you? Turn your back. When you're romantic. But two buttons, mean two ones. You don't have the love of Christ. Because Jesus is a very romantic man. Yeah, I'm telling you. A man who can actually forgive you your sin and pamper you so that you will not die in your iniquity. Very romantic. Very, very. So, number two, spend time together without technology. Number three, invest in yourselves. When was the last time the two of you, number one, you read one book together? Ah, when was the last time the two of you, you, you are dating someone, you, you are dating someone, and the person you are dating, the two of you cannot walk to one bookshop and say, babe, let's go to Charlie Bookshop. Let's go and buy a book on how to make your marriage work. And then when you go and visit him, you open the book, chapter four. Then the two of you read the book, no. When you go there, no, they will catch you like, Network, bram, it's like baby, I've missed you. You go, you go. 
bang. <coughs> First round is done. The whilst you're on the bed talking, talking, oh, bang, too. You're like, hey, it's a big muscle. <laughs> and, and sometimes, as we are laughing here, it's sad. Sometimes by the time you leave there, mark with two or three rounds. In fact, to be honest with you, you realize that spending three, four, five hours with him or the whole day, Mumi, you didn't talk about anything reasonable or sensible. Look, you think I'm joking. Then, after four, five, six months, Mumi, you are coming to marry. What are you going to build on? What is the foundation? Sex. Yeah? When you marry, you realize that sex, eh? La duva, la tuata. When you marry, and then you start paying school fees, realize that sex, eh? Marriage, you see, that's what I'm saying, that be responsible, make up your mind. At a point, when you have been married for 10, 15 years, you can stay one week, no sex. The two of you, you are thinking of how to raise money to pay children's school fees. Eh? Two weeks, no sex. Then that time you realize that there is something better than sex in marriage. Ah, uh, I'm count the cost. If God does not help you at all, and something strange happens to them with this pregnancy, wahala, and then the doctor says that don't sleep with your wife for three months, four months, five, which it can happen, Papa. For this reason, if you love this thing and that, the baby, don't don't touch your wife for one year. Hey, crash it. Mr. Gentleman, hey, prayer tower. And then you are with your wife for one year. You see her nakedness, but you can't touch her. Over your mind. Whoa! Learn how to spend quality time. Invest in yourself. Pray together. When was the last time you prayed together with your partner? You went to visit your boyfriend, your fiancé. You didn't even, the whole night, we told you don't go, but you went. And the whole night, you didn't say anything, like, baby, let's pray, Christ. You didn't say something. You slept there the early morning, four o'clock. He woke you up and said, let's go. I want to go and drop you. Huh. He doesn't even see anything better around you. There's no nice perfume around you. No aroma. Number four. Be gentle in conflicts. If you want to have a successful marriage, be gentle in conflicts. And talk what? Make a fight. Conflict here. Yeah. When we don't really agree on the subject, be gentle. Be gentle. Look at the and say, be gentle. Be bini. Be bini. Oh. Gentle, boy. Bo say, whilst the woman is trying to explain herself, the man goes like, uh-huh, it's you. Mm, it's you. Say, be bimini. The man is the boss. The woman is a slave. Uh-huh, it's you. What can I say? What can I say? Good night. Abib, no one can say. What can I say? What can I say? Ah. When something happens, please, let's address the issue, not the person. Let's address the issue. So, for example, she didn't wash the dishes. And you think that it's not the right thing to do. When you come, please, don't fight him. Don't fight her. Let's talk about the dishes. Am I making sense? Hey, and sometimes we fight them and leave the problem. And so they be an idea in the house. Why they didn't wash? Why well, you can go like, oh baby, you couldn't wash. Why this and that? No, no, you didn't wash. You are such a lazy woman. Tokwana started. Be gentle. In, when somebody don't agree with you, be gentle. Baby, be ma'am. We will insult you because we feel like when we insult you, that it shows our power. If you want to have a successful good marriage, please listen to the full story of your partner when they want to explain something to you. Take your time and listen. Listen to the full story. So we need, listen. And women can talk, adapt, exaggerate. They cannot. Sometimes she, she comes to her, Atari and she's saying, Oh, Atari and saying, Atari and FM, we're in the saying, Mr. Satan, I swear, she. Saturday, Saturday, and Zip need a Shreyan and yeah. It's when you say, Eh, yeah, or Eh, yeah, now sometimes even when I'm saying, Eh, yeah, my eyes are looking here. But I'm saying, Eh, yeah, because I have to listen. If you don't listen, you will sleep. When the woman wants to explain something to you, take your time and listen to her. Even if it's one hour, just keep quiet and go like, Mm hmm, 
Uh-huh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's nice. Oh, wow. Wow. Even if you don't like, if you don't want to listen, trouble for you, that they pack. Listen. You know, sometimes some of us, the men, when a woman is trying to explain something, in between times, worse, we jump. Once they say this, it becomes the woman will go like, baby, take your time and listen. Say, no, 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 you can't be just yet. No, don't be just yet. You are trying to no, 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 no. If you want to have a successful relationship and marriage, please, when somebody is talking, let them finish. Don't make any harsh decision. Don't make it. Don't. If you want your marriage and your relationship to no, 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 no. One or two challenges, you know, you conclude they say, I want separation, I want divorce. I don't like the relationship again. I don't want the marriage again. I think you are not the right person. I think that I've chosen wrong. I think that I didn't pray well. I think that, I think, I think, sir. And when you think too much, you think. If you want to have a good, successful marriage, please don't rush and conclude on matters. If you don't understand anything about your partner, ask questions. Don't pretend to know. Ask questions. Be real. Don't fake. Ask questions. If you don't understand any movement, ask questions. Why did you do that? Why? But don't go, ah, I think my wife is cheating. I think my husband, no, no, no. <laughs> or you're funny. May the spirit of the Lord is upon me. <laughs> he has anointed me to see. <laughs> you know, me, when you try to cheat, God will speak to me in dreams and vision. Hey. When it comes to romance, don't underestimate the power of thank you. If you want your marriage and your relationship to work, when it comes to romance, don't underestimate the power of thank you. After love making, learn how to say thank you, baby, for satisfying me. And listen, above all, before I say I am ending here, listen, listen, appreciate your partner. The little things they do for you, learn how to say thank you. And you'll be an Indian, sir. It's not everybody who gets it like that. The little things they do, learn how to say, when they wash for you, Thank you. When they take your things to laundry, thank you. When they cook for you, when they serve you, thank you. When they help you with something, and learn how to say thank you. Thank you. It's a sign to say that I will appreciate you forever. And at least I respect you. <laughs>